Hello, and welcome to the Cage Fight Podcast, where we talk about Nicolas Cage movies a bunch and often torture ourselves. Hey, hey. Uh, I'm Nick. Across from me is Mike. And uh, we got some, some great news here. We finally fired Dave. <laughs> it, it, it was quite a lengthy process. Um, it, was, it got down and it got dirty. Um, but uh, yeah, with, with just the right amount of pushing, we finally got Dave out yeah, the door. Got him out of the fucking door and out where, somewhere he belongs, which is certainly not behind some fucking boards in a uh, fucking audio production studio. And we've got a new engineer up on the boards, Engineer Eric. Want to say hi? Hello. Yeah. Hey, Eric. Uh, and we, we've assured, um, we've been assured by Eric that um, there's not going to be any disturbed soundboards <laughs> or uh, interjections um, that are, you know, contribute absolutely nothing. Yeah. We, um, yeah, I run a pretty tight ship, so. Yeah, yeah he's, uh, he's got the shit down on lock. Would you say that you're an authoritarian? Uh, yes, probably. Okay, well, that, see, that's what we were looking for in the first place. Exactly. And then we kind of, how do we even wind up with Dave in the first place? How, he just, like, was waiting outside my door, like, please, I'll produce anything, just give me, like, a dollar. And I was like, okay, fuck it. But That sounds like Dave. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I've ever seen Dave not on his knees and begging for something. <laughs> so, that sounds about right. <laughs> Well, anyways, uh, Zach isn't here today. He couldn't make it. And uh, we've got a new guest on. He's, uh, he's a longtime fan. He's been listening for quite some time. Uh, his name's Dave. Uh, what's up? Hey. Da what? <laughs> oh, he wasn't listening. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. What was that? Uh, we were <laughs> introducing our guest Dave. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, guys. It's good to see you. It's nice to sit at the table for once now, rather than being stuck doing some slave work. Oh, shit. I thought it was a... Is this what he looks like? He's always I been in the separate room. I have never seen him before. Oh. And again, I mean, he is on his knees, so I'm willing to believe it's Dave. I think that's a fair assessment. <laughs> uh, what, and what were you... <laughs> well, if you guys want to tweet right now and let us know, is this Dave? <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the episode, we're going to take... Yeah, this is a live episode, by the way. Um, <laughs> at the end of the episode, we're going to take all your votes and we're going to determine if that's Dave. Um, anyway, so we, we're here today with, with our new guest who has watched the movies, I believe. Uh, and to, he's gone. Yeah. Well, uh, speaking of uh, speaking of votes um, and listeners, I just wanted to um, I have a, qu a quick bit of housekeeping to do. Oh yeah. Um, I have uh, I'm gonna, I I put out a tweet for the G Force gang, um, seeing if anybody had any questions or you know general inquiries and all that good stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And so I've got I've got quite a bit of responses from the G Force gang. And I just wanted to uh, read some of uh, the tweets that I got on here, if that's okay with you guys. That, yeah, that's fine with me. Sorry, I wasn't listening. What was that? Um, <laughs> I'm reading tweets from the GeForce gang. So this was uh, this popped in my inbox, caught my interest. It says, um, you cannot judge my, my stock market performance since the inauguration, which was very good, but only from the day uh, after the big election win, which was spectacular due to the euphoria of getting Obama Biden out. And getting uh, now, well, well it's, okay, that got a little bit questionable. Oh, oh, okay. Wait, wait. Um, who who tweeted that? Uh, you know, I don't have any sources for these tweets. I just have text. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's where I can't shout out any of these people. Um, so we got uh, what else? What, what, what else we got here? Um, it was my great honor to no. That, the fake news me media wants to <laughs> oh. stay as far away as possible from the Ukraine and China. Deals made by the Bidens. I I should have probably fielded some of these first. Uh, yeah, well, I thought you were going through your DMs. I, <laughs> oh, wait, I might be. Um, I, well, or maybe uh, this is just who represents the G-Force gang. I don't really know, but uh, I have, I'm scrolling through here. I've never seen the term fake news so many times <laughs> uh, besides, you know, like, ironically. But Are they... Uh, um are they talking about the fake news that G-Force is good? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think uh, something about a G-Force will not be impeached. Uh, so, 
<laughs> Try and impeach G Force. Uh, any, I guess, any G Force I mean, gang listeners, uh, send me some something else, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll read it next time. As somebody who saw G Force, alongside somebody here who saw G Force, sitting in the seat of somebody else who saw G Force and actually enjoyed it and <laughs> voted it through, all of the reference to our beloved democracy is all in good taste because. You're losing now, dog. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, it's, it's, two, it's two to three. The, or yeah, two the, to one. <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit outnumbered here as far as G-Force gang members go. I got a couple Captain Corellis in the house. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to I'm not gonna let them tread on me. So I'm All just right. going to say that right out of the gate. Keep licking that G-Force boot. <laughs> hey, you know what? I I I will. G force lives matter. I, oh, this is, okay. So what movies this are we talking? This is all going to get cut. Uh, yeah, that, was, that was a bit rocky. We're, we're off to a rocky start. Um, but that's the use, I think. Uh, today we're talking about 2018's The Humanity Bureau and um, 2011's Trespass. Two movies that you've probably never heard of. I certainly hadn't. Um, and. Uh, I, if you weren't listening today, you would have been able to keep it that way, and I would have said good job, but you're listening to us, so better job. You hadn't seen uh, THB before this? No, Humanity I had Humanity Bureau? It's, no. Nope. Uh, it's kind of a cult classic um, amongst... Uh, <laughs> a cult classic from last year. <laughs> it's, it's one of those instant cult classics. <laughs> you know how some movies uh, are like direct-to-video really quick, which is actually topical for this episode? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Some some movies are direct to cult status, ah. um, where they're just uh, so good uh, that that uh, you know you know people, there's just legions of fans them, immediately yeah. there ready to jump on it. Um, well, I guess uh, we 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 can start talking about the movies a little bit. Uh, 2018 Humanity Bureau cult classic status. Apparently, uh, I was not aware of this. Mike did his research on that aspect. I did not quite. I did my research by just living and having my finger on the pulse. <laughs> the pulse so. of, of what? I'm, st- I'm still listening. I got to get some water. <laughs> All right. yeah. and, and, uh, this is about right for Dave. In classic yeah, fashion, uh, Dave's gone. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Humanity Bureau 2018. Uh, you, got, you got the numbers on this bad boy? Uh, um, so, okay. Rated R. Um, budget, $6 million. Box office gross, Fifty-eight thousand nine hundred and seventy dollars. Sounds like a deficit. Minor, minor. We've seen worse flops, I think, or have we? I don't know. <laughs> that's that's a quite a big differential. I feel like. Yeah, it's uh, it's off by what uh, two orders of magnitude. <laughs> so like, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 a bit of a big difference. But it was directed by the King, Rob W. King, to be exact. Who um, I don't know anything about this man but i assume that he's very kingly and he might be related to don king maybe uh, larry king not really sure which good one of the kings because uh, i think those kings are Stephen very king not related uh <laughs> i know which king he's related to and i'm not allowed to talk about him here continue oh the, uh, <laughs> the king himself has directed uh other you know cult classics uh such as distorted uh oh. tokyo trial and 2004's Corner Gas. Wait, Tokyo Trial, was that the sequel to Tokyo Drifting? I think so. That's uh, Everybody got tickets for d- racing in Tokyo Drifting, so <laughs> yeah. they had to do the Tokyo Trial. <laughs> the t- Tokyo Traffic Court. Yeah. Uh, they had to <laughs> go all the way that. back to Tokyo, because uh, they <laughs> didn't get a good enough lawyer. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he's, I mean, obviously very prolific. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, obviously, yeah, and he's... Production companies were Mind's Eye Entertainment, because uh, if you look into your mind's eye, maybe you can picture this as a good movie. I'm pretty sure Mind's Eye... Wait, what was Mind's Eye's Mind's Eye Productions? Entertainment. Entertainment. I think they made the music video to uh, um, Some Type of Way by Rich Homie Kwan, if oh. I remember correctly. The yeah, you might, might want to might wanna check into that, because I'm pretty sure that's the... I know for a fact it's not. Come on, don't actually do the research. <laughs> uh, well, you know what? Let, let me roll with some fake news here. Come on. I, uh, well, put whoa, me behind whoa. a microphone. Let me say my shit. Well, this is the fake news episode, apparently. <laughs> I actually have an inside uh, man with Rich Homie Kwan. I will be uh, meeting Young Thug in a couple of weeks. So uh, Hell I'll yeah. ask him. Oh, nice. 
Wait, yeah. really? Yeah. Yeah, I got uh you know, uh you know, I'm a big uh, I'm a big hip hop stan, you mm-hmm. know, and stan is reference to a hip hop song apparently. Oh yeah, um Isn't that by Dido? Yep. Uh Dildo. Uh, Dildo, yeah, that's right. Oh. And so uh you know oh, I thought I, it was always a reference to stand and deliver that movie. Stan and deliver. Uh yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I figured, uh, what do I, what am I going to do with this $200 that I have sitting here on my desk? It's been here for years. Uh, I'm going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to hang out with young thug for 45 to 50 seconds and, <laughs> uh, get a young thug rolling tray along with it. So, uh, oh, nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, rich homie quanta version. Um, <laughs> hope our listeners love that. Also, Bridgegate Pictures and VMI Worldwide, which I believe the Sex Pistols wrote a song about that or something. I don't know. Like, yeah, we're in the VMI. I don't know. Yeah, the Sex I, it's, it's a bit. I know what it actually the, is. The Sex Pistols <laughs> featuring <laughs> Rich Homie Kwan. Um, so, hey dog, really? <laughs> these are, these are the, the music nerd bits that we're doing for today. Well, let me quick do some research about that. <laughs> um, so Rotten Tomatoes This got a 25% on the tomato meter Meaning one in four p- reviews were positive um, Which is shocking yeah. Uh, Well yeah but when you think about it One in four people uh, Don't deserve to have an opinion On anything so That is a fair uh, point is that, is that true? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah let me do some research <laughs> <laughs> let's, look, let's look up those numbers Dave just pulled out a giant encyclopedia <laughs> Oh, this I thought you were going somewhere else with that, which I also did. <laughs> oh, His yeah. ding dong's out. He's got Hell a ding yeah. dong. <laughs> What's up, guys? I want to introduce to you my guest. <laughs> Sorry. Carry we on. have a guest, we, we, and our guest has a guest. He so. has ding dongs. Does he have, uh, oh my God, Twinkies? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what about a host? <laughs> no, See, your ding dong's kind of a Twinkie. It's white and filled with cream. Yeah, yeah a hostess joke. <laughs> We're really We're, killing it. <laughs> I'm floundering. I'm sorry. I haven't been a host in like a month. I spent about a month in the backpacking uh, and not talking to really anybody. Trees, uh, uh, tapers. Saw a taper. Oh, ooh. Uh, so, yeah. give it a nice pet pet. Did you get a capybara? Oh no, not the not the animal taper. There was somebody who was recording me. Uh, oh, okay. Going through the. <laughs> so um, was it was it logan paul <laughs> it, it was i was, it was i was suicide force. i was trying to hang from a Topical. tree innocently and uh <laughs> wait, was, speaking of uh this is we can make this semi-adjacent uh because movies uh have you guys seen the trailer for the new logan paul movie <laughs> Oh, you got to be fucking kidding me this he, is real he has it's a real. movie he has a movie because when you have money when why not a- blow it and yeah, when you're a rich kid you know <laughs> right so it's all expendable uh, n- homework for next time uh this includes our listeners watch the the trailer for jake paul's movie and i wish i was joking it's called airplane mode it's about um jake paul uh and i, I, I jake paul logan paul i don't know the difference so if i'm uh, there's one that's like a meathead and one that's like a meathead but skinny Okay. Well, I I will I will be conflating the two. One of them has a movie coming out, and I think it's the Suicide Forest one, whichever that one is. Uh, the premise of the movie is him and a bunch of other YouTubers are on a plane together, and nobody turns on airplane mode on their phone, right? Okay. Oh. I know. We're bus. We've all been in this situation where they're like, "Turn your phone on airplane mode," and you're like, "I'm playing Garfield food truck." So. <laughs> Uh, nobody turns on airplane mode. Uh, somehow this leads to the pilot, uh, fainting. And the (laughs) only person who can fly the plane to safety is whichever Paul is in this movie. Yeah, you're fucking joking me. That's terrible. And it's, it it boasts that there's 23 other, uh, like hyper famous YouTubers. I recognize like maybe two people Mm. and really, I think it's not Davey 504. I really don't want to see it. I just don't care. (laughs) They're they're like YouTubers that you only recognize because you've like hate watched a video or like you've seen somebody else describing themselves, hate watching one of their videos. Uh, (laughs) so it's mostly those people. Um, so just a quick diversion and a plug yeah. for the new Jake slash maybe Logan Paul movie. Yeah, I'm assuming both of them will be in it since they're brothers. Yeah. Uh, okay. So are they I'll related be sure. to Cliff Paul? <laughs> they're related to Chris Paul, actually. <laughs> yeah. Isn't well, that's his twin, right? <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't know any much about Chris Paul except for he's uh, kind of a piece of shit. 
Uh, so yeah, well, he's he's also an insurance salesman, you know. Oh, Where, yeah. Do you remember that commercial? You guys saw that commercial, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. you couldn't American avoid family. it. Remember, he, he he had a twin. You know, it was supposed to sell insurance. I know? do remember um, that now. Yeah, it's all really upsetting. <laughs> yeah. If you don't, <laughs> it's, uh... if I'm not responding for a while, I'm just you know wildly cutting myself, just trying to end it. <laughs> yeah. He's been doing that this whole time. Uh, and uh, hey, how's yeah. my seed feel up there, asshole? <laughs> yeah, I forgot we have a, a probably a little bit of animosity here. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I didn't really think about that when we were booking. Well, this. let me tell yes. you guys a little story. <laughs> so, when I was forcefully removed from my own studio, thank Impeached? you, and <laughs> <laughs> Im- impeachment inquiry, <laughs> that well. I went to go get some unemployment benefits because I was removed from my job, not of my own volition. And then I was informed that I'm now a guest here and I'm still an employee. So this is the only way that my money... It's some bullshit, you know? I should be out on the road with national pleasure right now, but instead I'm sitting in a chair talking about some movies that I may or may not have watched. In in what capacity are you employed exactly? Because I've... I'm, uh, I was told that you were fired, and I'm not hip to whatever look, happened. I promised him some money to come on here, but uh, I, I, take your headphones off for a second, Dave. I, I, uh, I didn't. I, I don't have any money to give him, and I don't really plan on giving him any. So, like, um, he, um, sorry, Purvis texted me. What are you talking about? I'll throw oh, my oh, just nothing. Right oh, we'll, 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 pay him. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll pay you at the end of the show. Don't worry about it. Yeah, and how much was it? Was it ten bucks or what? Yeah, I think I think I promised him like you know like five thousand dollars. <laughs> oh well, uh, I mean, as long as you're bringing the heat, uh, it, it'll pay for itself. I don't know. If I were still the engineer, I would cue the theme song again right now because we haven't <laughs> talked about any movies. Yet. <laughs> you are not the engineer, uh, and uh, we're I guess and the quality of the show is suffering for it. I hope you guys like that. I don't know. I That's think just a so. coincidence. <laughs> if Zach were here, he would smooth all of this out. But he's protesting because he hates that you what you guys did to me. Yeah, he's he outside with me. a sign. Actually, <laughs> yeah. we could get him in here. We we did cross the picket line that Zach set up, so we're I guess we're kind of scabby. But um, I saw know. him out there, but I wasn't going to make an appearance. You know, I had <laughs> shit to do. Yeah, we're we're, <clears throat> we're crossing several uh, several picket lines today. We're uh, actually Dave's eating Chick Fil A right now, um, yeah. so that's that's one thing. Uh, and um, hell yeah, there's and a it's picket sitting fence. on this nice this nice pretty plate that I bought at Hobby Lobby. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah! Did that uh, come with the swastika on it, or did you paint that yourself? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> moving back to the Humanity Bureau, so some fun facts about this. I've got one fun fact. I hope it's the fun fact that I. I there's a, there's a few fun facts, but only one of them really matters. Yeah. And the I, I have effect... a feeling that you locked in on the same one. <laughs> yeah, I believe so. <laughs> uh, the sound effect for opening and closing Cage's cell phone. In the movie, is the same one that they used for the active camo power up in Halo when you get those. Yeah. So hey, they uh, pulled out the stops, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, every time his phone went off, I was expecting to get shot in the head immediately. Yes, yeah. uh... <laughs> sniper rifle. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's all the fun facts we got because there's not really much fun about this movie except yeah. us talking about it right now with our <laughs> dearly beloved guest who yeah, actually, uh, is very happy to be here. What um, we could do is we could just stop the record right now and go play Halo. Uh, I, I'm down for it. I'm playing on my phone right now. I got the <laughs> the mobile port. Yeah. All right, we'll be back. It's, it's Garfield <laughs> Halo truck. <laughs> Master Chief's dropping lasagnas. <laughs> but speaking of, I am still thinking we should get a Garfield Food Truck sponsorship. So if you're listening, owners of that, please sponsor us. Two of the three people on right now certainly play it. Three if Zach was still here, but he is picketing. Uh, uh, and I could use a couple extra coins. And Jim Davis, if you're listening, uh, we'll have you on as a guest. Uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know uh, if you're a reliable guest, uh, but we'll, f- we'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. We'll get it. I think Jim Davis would be a great addition to the team. So if we move on to the plot summary here, uh, what I've got, which is somewhat brief in comparison to some of the plot summaries I've given you, which last like an hour. (laughs) Uh, So Nicolas Cage works for the Humanity Bureau. His name is Noah Cross. Same initials. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is the same initials. I I really looked at that and went, well, that's not biblical at all. Noah, (laughs) Noah Cross. There's no references there. Uh, and he's driving to some small town. 
And uh, I guess in this new futuristic dystopian <clears throat> apocalyptic society, uh, like, I don't know, the water is all gone and bad things are happening. All the fish are dead and extinct. Uh, yeah, there's no water. It's Mad Max Fury Road. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Uh, Cage here, he's not a doctor, but uh, he his job is to uh, check up on people uh, and determine if they are contributing to society. Is that? Yeah, I guess it's against the law to not be a productive working citizen. So yeah. uh, he's confronting some guy about it. That guy tries to kill him. And uh, Cage kills him first. It turns out that guy was the former governor of Colorado. <laughs> Doesn't he kill himself? I thought he blew his own brains out. No, I think Cage shoots him. Yeah, Cage shoots him a few times. He shoots a hole through the wall, and then he's like, where did he go? And then he shot somebody else, and then Cage emptied like three bullets on him, and then... Yeah, I knew um, that. I watched this movie. There are a lot of black and white photographs. Um, yeah. I just had a terrifying flashback to something that does happen in this scene, uh... Where there's <laughs> there's a picture of uh, this guy and uh, like I think whatever president was like in office when he was like uh, is is that am I getting that wrong? Yeah, I yeah, it was recall. it was this guy. I'm yeah, taking was, notes. Yeah, no, he was. Uh, the, he's talking about how he had dinner at the White House and it was good dinner. You know, it was veiled, but it was very very thinly veiled, referencing like eating McDonald's at the White House. Anyways, yeah, continue. it was it was no. a very <laughs> uh, a chilling reference to our current reality. Uh, right, which, which I have, I have, I guess I haven't uh, really seen in a movie uh, at this point, but it was. You know, sometimes I like to watch movies to escape, you know? Yeah, and, uh, I feel you. So it's, it's good to really ta be taken to a, you know, a magical uh, place, you know. It was, oh, see, anyways, I missed that bit. I'm going to, yeah, I, I've got some pretty hard opinions about this movie, and I'm going to save them until the end. You know, we can go through the plot. and well, then we fire uh, him again? <laughs> <laughs> fire these nuts, motherfucker. Uh, so as it moves on there's an exposition dump like yeah there's no fish in the sea severe water shortages they stopped making cars 30 years ago for some reason uh, yeah. uh, and gas with shortages no, uh, with no fish in the sea people were running out of like metaphors for when somebody's kind of having a hard time in the dating scene mm -hmm. um, so yeah they're like oh there are you know there's no water anywhere <laughs> so there's plenty it's a of trout for all of us uh, there's plenty of except dirt for the, in the land oasis. of 10,000 lakes canada <laughs> yeah the land of a thousand lakes canada <laughs> that was the dumbest Jesus fucking reference fucking in the Christ. Movie. yeah all right somebody calls canada the land of land of a thousand lakes which is minnesota first of uh, all and I mean, it's close also enough the to land canada. of 10,000 lakes um, but, but it, this is also not the first movie that we've watched where like <laughs> fleeing to canada is the ultimate goal oh uh, yeah there's been at least one uh i think was amos it amos and andrew wasn't he trying to get to canada amos and andrew and i feel like in trapped in paradise too maybe that i uh, could be getting that maybe wrong, but i don't recall somebody don't listen a lot about that movie except potato flakes <laughs> tell me what we talked about <laughs> um i just like to uh jump in for a second finland is actually the land of a thousand lakes oh okay oh, shit. oh no shit really and now, Finland is... Yeah, see, this is why we like Eric on the boards. He has fun facts to contribute see, here. I, that was more useful I'm gonna than go anything <laughs> Dave has ever done. Uh, <laughs> I want to say no offense, but I don't really care how you feel about that. That was... Thank you, Eric. Uh, Up all yours. And now, uh, for those who don't have a map in front of them, Finland is wedged right between uh, the United States and Canada. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it's not uh, completely inaccurate. Yeah, it's huh. it's yeah. They they were kind of close on. Well, there. also this is a dystopian future, so we don't know if there was some kind of situation where land masses were shifting. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we don't really we know there's no water, uh, so maybe uh, all the water dried up and pushed Finland right. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't that know. could happen. Maybe it's really far in the future and some tectonic plates move things around. I just remembered a really, really funny part of this movie. Sorry. Anyways, keep going. Uh, okay. uh, maybe either. this movie uh, should have uh, like a fantasy novel started with like a map of uh, the current situation to give you context. And then you kind of flip <laughs> right. back to it. Uh, <laughs> so um, in the next couple of scenes, Cage is interviewing a mother and son that apparently want to stay in these wastelands because they just like it there um 
and he determines that they've got to be resettled because they're not adequately caring for themselves and you know they're not happy about it and then like the boy is playing around on the roof for some reason and just <laughs> he's, he's he's busy not pulling his weight in society so <laughs> and uh he falls off the roof and his heart stops <laughs> yeah. so cage goes and gives him cpr for falling 10 feet off the fucking roof and and the kids <laughs> saves his life he saves his life and uh so he, he hears that the kid has a recital, a singing recital, and he decides, he has a change of heart and decides to delay their deportation a little bit. So. Yeah, because he has fond memories as a kid of, like, fishing with his dad or something, and he wants uh, this kid to have something to look back on besides being kicked out of his home. So <laughs> he decides to, uh, you know, mess up the paperwork a little bit so they have a couple extra days. Mm-hmm. So, during this time, Cage is also being investigated by his agency uh, because he's being considered for a promotion. So they're looking into him to make sure he's doing good things, I guess. And uh, his superiors—it's uh, a bureau, not an agency. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're correct. <laughs> Damn, okay, now I don't like it. <laughs> I, I like him even more. That was. What are you gonna do? Fire him? <laughs> Probably. We'll take a vote here. <laughs> uh, you're still in my good graces, Eric. So keep it coming. Uh. They're just going to shit can you as soon as you say something that, you, that they don't like. Like, I'm not paying attention or no. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, so uh, his superior is waiting for him at, at his house when he gets home. His superior, who I call Discount Bruce Willis, uh, because oh, he's yeah. a bald-headed, angry old white dude. That... Yeah, the only difference is that you can fit about three of his own eyeballs in between his eyeballs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, when Cage enters his house, he's like crawling through the air ducts uh, of his house uh, <laughs> and uh, other diehard references. So. Yeah, and he yells, yippee ki yay, Nicholas Cager. <laughs> um, but he chews him out for delaying the deportation. He says, like, you got to be heartless in this industry. You can't, you can't delay deportations. Yeah. De- deportation. It helps to be a big piece of shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cage then, um, on his way out of the office, he meets, there's some guy in the elevator who's like, hey, let me tell you about these deportations here. Read this chip. And then Cage is like, oh, okay. So he sees the info, looks it up on his computer or his cell phone, and says like, oh, my God, what have we done? And we don't know what they've done until later, but we yeah. can kind of assume these people dress in all black and look like Nazis and they round people up. And well, one of them <laughs> looks like Dr. Evil. Like, well, Dr. Evil, if he was like an EDM DJ. Like, oh, yeah. um, Dr. EDM. <laughs> Dr. EDM. <laughs> Evil dance music. We gotta get Dr. Um, EDM on the fucking pod. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> I wonder if his eye's gonna come back. The Evil um, Doctor podcast with Dr. EDM and Dr. Lime. And, <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, well, the guy in the elevator has a very, very, very well-trimmed mustache. That was the big takeaway I had from that. It was perfect. I, I mean, I try. I can't. There's no way. I have a shitty mustache to begin with, but, like, I mean, this is a perfect line cut. Like, it's, mm-hmm. you, you ought to go back and watch. I, I don't go back and watch that. Continue. Oh, wait, let's go back and watch it let's right go, now, I'm, real quick. I mean, I'm down. <laughs> yeah, let's watch. Uh, I let's don't know. <laughs> I got picket lines to ignore. And <laughs> <laughs> um. So he goes back to warn the family that they got to leave or these fascists going to take them away and he can't stop them. And uh, he, he sees their recital with Amazing Grace where the children <laughs> sing it. <laughs> that, that was the funny part that I remembered. Um, very, very these, wrong. these kids cannot sing at all and the uh, they screw up the melody completely to... Uh, it's amazing grace, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's they get the melody completely wrong and then Yeah, they um, just his solo hit wrong notes. The, the kid's solo is just beautiful. Um he oh, actually yeah. steps up to the front and uh just says the pledge of allegiance. Like doesn't sing it, but this is the you know, the memory that uh Nicolas Cage is trying to preserve for him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't wanna miss out on your pledge of allegiance recital. <laughs> yeah. Right. And uh now do we this is a dystopian future, so uh, basically everything is terrible, and they took under God out of that Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, they did? did, they? did I, they? I, I no, I think, I, I think it was still oh, in there, yeah. I think it was in there. Yeah. Damn. Well, because he pauses for a long time beforehand after he notices Nicolas Cage in the audience, uh, and then, yeah, <laughs> um, then he continues to say, 
one nation under God, indivisible, well, at least, whatever. At least not all was lost then. That yeah. They still had some God they, in their they, lives. As long as they preserve <laughs> yeah. something. Uh, and hey, you know, it's not going to be, uh, it's, they're not going to change it to one nation underwater. You know, so, uh, <laughs> so, uh, hey. No, fucking I see what you did there. I, mean, I like uh, it. I hope this is the last podcast I ever record. <laughs> so uh, the fascies come, but Cage manages to get away with the family. Uh, the boy shoots the main fasci, uh, discount Bruce Willis, Dr. Evil, Dr. EDM. Uh, he shoots him in the eye with a BB gun, So, ah, yes. which he then repairs by taping a slice of bread with electrical tape. Yes, that, 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 was, uh, that was an excellent part. That, um, yeah. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, he legit has a piece of bread um, electrical taped and an X to his face. Um I mean, it soaks up it the was, blood pretty well, so... Yeah, it was... Uh, and the next time you see him, it's just burnt to toast just right around his eye. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's chilling there. Um, that's gotta got hurt, getting fucking crumbs in your socket. Right, yeah. right. After, yeah. His white-hot rage <laughs> at people like, <laughs> getting away and not Damn, genocided. you shot me! Someone get me the... <laughs> get me the sourdough! <laughs> <laughs> uh but uh, so after Cage and this family get away, which is just a mother and a son, uh, who I don't remember their names. The son had a name that was uh, said once or twice. Lucas. Yeah, Lucas. That was it. Lucas. Um, I don't remember the wife, the the and woman's name. The wife name was there. probably. Uh, or sorry, the mother was probably uh, George. Yeah, George and Lucas. <laughs> yeah, George and Lucas. Okay. Uh, their plan is to go to Jackfish Lake in Canada, uh, where they'll have to pass through a large military borderline. And shit. But uh, they swap cars with a lady. Uh, he, he Cage trades his old El Camino that the Humanity Bureau is using for some reason in the year 2030 that I believe this is supposed to take place in. And See, this is just a place for a quick observation, I think. Because um, when he's on the run with his El Camino, he goes in, begins talking. I mean, gas is at a shortage, and he's driving in an El Camino. Yeah. And an El Camino gets about five miles to the gallon. Um I don't know. I just thought that was an interesting plot hole, especially <laughs> that he goes and sells this uh, government branded uh, El Camino that has, you know, the Humanity Bureau plastered all over it. Um, kind of like a fuck he, you he, to that he, lady. he goes, <laughs> yeah, he goes and trades it off. Um, and I don't, sorry, it's it was it was quite empty. Continue. <laughs> no, that's. I, I felt the same thing because it was like he's just trading like a marked vehicle that people are searching for to this random woman, and she doesn't think anything of it. She's just looking at it like, "Oh, the Humanity Bureau. Oh, sweet, I, yeah, cool." But um, I definitely so, won't get chased down driving this car. Yeah. So uh, she tells him that there's no roads no north anymore, but she can get him to a guy who can help them. Then uh, you know, discount Bruce Willis confronts the guy who gave Cage the info. Uh. The the one who gave him that flash drive that had all the uh, the info on it. Perfectly trimmed mustache. Yeah, perfectly trimmed mustache, man. PTM. And he <laughs> murders his family. <laughs> and yeah. well, and it's like a really good zoom in on the family. Like it's it's like one of those weird uh, implied moments where it's like you know you go back to your family and then it slowly the camera creeps in on the family on the ground. It's like uh, there's uh, there's Karen with the, the <laughs> neck wounds and then the daughter. Yeah, anyways. Yeah. It's it's well, just it, like it creeps in this like is it's what going... happened for in case you wanted to see a scene related to this. Yeah. In case you were wondering what the evil guy meant when he said go home to your family after threatening to kill his family at the start of it. Um, so, uh Cage and the fam find the guy who talks in a weird British accent but says he's from Germany, <laughs> moved here a long time ago. Uh we had a mild disagreement about this because I think that he sounded like a pirate. But oh, yeah. Anyways, continue. He does sound piratish a little bit. He's a German-English pirate. <laughs> yes. There can be German pirates. The default pirate accent is the southwestern British accent. Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh. Yeah, well, usually. Well, if you'd like, you could take my seat down here, Mr. New Engineer. Damn, Eric rules. Yeah. Putting Dave in his place. I like about two of the three things he said thus far. I don't like the part where he corrects me. I'm three for three, but uh, I'm trying to think of one instance of Dave saying anything remotely as informative, and I'm coming up short. (laughs) All I was doing was pointing out both of you were right. See? That's got to make up for the last time, right? Oh, yeah. 
Um, but let's see. Okay. Cage and the fam find the guy, tells him how to get to Canada, uh, past a heavily fortified border wall, apparently, and a highly radioactive land. So he gives them a Geiger counter to check it out and make sure they're not going to, you know, roll into Chernobyl and die. Is uh, and, is this the part where there's the very, the uh, you know, very wink at the camera line where they uh, says, I have the quote here. <laughs> oh, say, yes. That, that's a little bit later. That's okay, a little okay bit I'll, later. I'll save it. I'll save it. I, I know the wink at the camera line you're thinking, <laughs> I think. But, um, so... Uh, they stop on their drive there. They stop at a warehouse so the kid can go to the bathroom. And what do you know? The fascies are there waiting for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Discount Bruce Willis tries to kidnap that kid. But with very little effort. Basically just tries to give him a swirly. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's trying to... Uh, can, the, there's actually a side story where uh, Discount Bruce Willis is uh, on trial for kidnapping a child. And so he's trying to prove to his colleagues that he cannot do it very well <laughs> yeah. uh, so just a little bit of backstory yeah so he he grabs the kid and uh the kid is like hey what's this and he's like that's my false eye even though he's wearing an eye patch which <laughs> right. really confuses me and then the kid's like oh no and throws it down like a grate and then the guy's like ah oh, you kid and then he's like don't worry i'll get it and then he's just perfectly cool with that and the kid <laughs> yeah. somehow also has like a fucking laser sharp idea of how to get out of the place using uh the drainage drainage <laughs> yeah. yeah um it was pretty rough yeah but anyways he gets back with the rest of the family they drive away uh we find out that through a secret conversation between Cage and the mother of the child that Cage is the kid's dad and she's not really the mother. She took the place of the mother who died yeah, in some... Uh, the, the mother of the, of the child was like trying to sell the kid for food. Um, yeah. and the, she, she couldn't let that happen because he was too beautiful. <laughs> yeah, so she uh, kills the birth mother, claims herself as the new mother... Of this child, and uh, now legally owns it, I think, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how it works. If you want a kid, kill the parent, take the kid. Right. Assume the identity of the parent, and everything's okay. Mm-hmm. But, uh, so, uh, during that revelation, she's like, are you, gonna, are you gonna tell the kid that you're really his dad? And Cage is like, maybe in Canada? I don't know. And then they move on. So, they get to the border of Canada, realize there's no radiation by using the Geiger counter. It's just the regular background radiation. But um, then the fascists show up at the border, Dispro discount Bruce Willis, Dr. EDM, BDW, or <laughs> DVW, DR, EDM. <laughs> I thought you were about to say uh, BBW Bruce Willis. And, uh... <laughs> BBW Bruce Willis. Wait, um... Has uh has Keenan Thompson come into the movie yet? Oh, Have he's been in the there? movie a bunch. I'm almost yeah. at, I I I kind of lifted him out of the movie because his character was entirely irrelevant. But yeah, <laughs> uh, but yeah. Well, except for well, a really important sight scene at the end. Anyways. Oh yeah, with they uh reenact the uh, Keenan and Kel opening theme with Coolio in the <laughs> the globe at Universal Studios or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> But uh, Dr. EDM kills the mother, uh, the not mother. The, the, <laughs> uh, and then Cage is just like, okay, how about you let this kid go? He doesn't, you know, he has no effect on this. Just let him go live his life and I'll give you that memory chip. And then Bruce Willis is like, yeah, <laughs> although not actually Bruce Willis. <laughs> but, uh, BBW Bruce Willis. <laughs> yeah, BBW Bruce Willis. And... um. So he takes the card, lets the kid run off, reads it, and he's like, this is blank. And then he kills Cage, and then the kid runs back for some reason, and then some random sniper kills all the fascist dudes except for Keenan Thompson. <laughs> yeah, well, I think the, the reason the kid ran back is because he wanted to see um, his mother's dead body one more time because he right. thought it was like, gross and cool like well, poked then, it with a stick he's like, yeah. Yeah. riot cops are stupid throw rocks at them but anyways sorry yeah. that's later in the movie i think uh, um, cool. I, I really haven't been paying attention <laughs> sorry yeah well yeah. at least you're consistent hey thanks nailed it uh, so uh then he uh oh yeah the canadians uh help out the kid kill all of them kill all of them fascies 
and they take the kid back and it find out that oh i forgot to mention that cage gave the kid a rabbit's foot early on in the movie well the memory card is in the rabbit's foot which is fairly fairly predictable and uh you know uh, I'm going to cough into the mic there real quick. <laughs> well, let me wait for an organic one to come along, okay. and I'll, I'll do you justice. Sorry. Hey, so, you know, somebody asked me to be on this podcast. I'm not really sure who it was. But, you know, not you either, actually. That now that I'm them. thinking about it, I'm going through the uh, the email thread, and I don't even see your name uh, in there at all. So, uh, <laughs> But, uh, so... The Canadians then released this info, which is that the U.S. government is committing a genocide against random people for some reason. Because when fascists target people, it's just people who live, you know, in the countryside. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's it's not like people of a specific race, creed, or religion. No, it's just people in the countryside. You get bored they want to kill them. You round up the hicks and you fucking <laughs> gas them. It's you know, simple. And uh, so a revolution begins. <laughs> Almost immediately, like Keenan Thompson hasn't even driven back to his office yet, <laughs> and somehow this information is so widespread that everyone is just revolting already. Right. It's like the the pirate people uh, they they pin a big uh, revolution banner on the side of their bus, yeah. and he starts fixing the bus. And they're like, "What's going on? There's a revolution going on." Yes. Just, just like, uh, come on, kids! Everybody uh, in the country was just like waiting for the the slightest sign of a revolution yeah, uh, like, and yeah let's do the revolution now fuck is it starting we're, we're doing it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh so bam revolution begins keenan thompson's <laughs> driving back and he's like oh shit there's a revolution happening in front of me people are throwing bricks and shit and uh yeah then we cut to lucas the kid swimming in a lake the end and whoa Let's not forget one very important detail. Mm. The lake is made of water. Oh, yeah. The lake mm. has water because they still have water in Canada. Because for some reason, this <laughs> ecological disaster ends directly at the U.S.-Canada border, goes no further north. It's very simple. Right. <laughs> uh, it's because of that big wall they built. Yeah. Oh, that they didn't build, we found oh, out. Yeah, yes. there was... That was the line. We'll cut this back in earlier. The, the, the wink at the camera line. Yeah. They, when they got to the border and found there was no radiation and no border wall, they the lady said, "It's easier to build fear, yeah, than it is to build a wall." Yeah. Dun dun dun. <laughs> and fucking. One moment. Oh, sorry. that was my bad this time. I don't know how that happened. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh I said sorry Jeez. and it thought I said Siri. <laughs> Uh, and then uh -oh. I said, Siri. so, um, uh, I f fucking forgot what I was going to say. Oh, Something yeah. about how, um, little did they know that all they had to do to build a wall was declare a state of emergency and redirect money from various other services. It's <laughs> super simple. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> as uh, we all weep to uh, ourselves. Yeah. This overall thoughts. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Oh, wait, were you just saying overall thoughts? Yeah. Well, yeah, um, this movie was patently stupid. Um, it was a, it was basically porn for people who want a revolution. It was very, uh, like, fe it sat on a lot of fences. You know, it was basically yeah. like, you know, whether you're, uh, you know, like a pro-Trumper, anti-Trumper, like, this movie is actually talking to you. Never mind, you know, it's like it never actually, like, out and, like, made a statement, but it was just, like, it, it was just, like, phony res revolution porn. I hated every moment of it. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, it, it definitely seemed like uh, a movie that you'd see on the shelf of, like, a doomsday prepper's fucking uh, bunker. Mm -hmm. Right, or even, I mean, it... But they don't commit to that though, because they yeah. they also like you know it's they don't one give of those, the government any actual policy yeah, stance. So it's just basically like you know if you believe that the sitting government is this, this movie's for you. If you believe the opposition is this, then this movie's for you. You know, it pretty much leaves it open for interpretation, so that you yeah. know it's just low hanging fruit bullshit. You know, yeah, you yeah. can you can uh, <clears throat> interpret it any way you want to to fit into your like echo chamber. Yeah, yeah. right. Exactly. That was. It seemed like that was the premise of it you know it was kind of like the you know um it, it made me think of that Hugh, that Hugh Laurie sketch or whatever where he uh he plays like a folk singer and he sings about a bunch of like vague issues and then he's like you know we got the solution it's plain and true all we got to do is uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah 
Yeah, I mean, I'm moral of the story, uh, and a reason that I actually loved this movie um, is because it really uh, solidified uh, my viewpoint that there's, you know, there's bad people on both sides. Uh, and, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. and the friggin', uh, yeah. You know what I really loved about this is it showed that the only... You know, the mass deportations to random camps, that wasn't bad. It was only bad when they became death camps, you know, exactly. when, when we found out they were death camps. It wasn't bad any other point in the thing. Also, you know? right. let's not forget how the child in this movie fends off the tyrannical government that's coming to take him, takes a gun and shoots him in the eye. It was a BB <laughs> gun. Oh, yeah. But... If they take away yeah. our BB guns, like, I don't know. Exactly. Yeah, what are we going to do? <laughs> if you don't got a good guy with a gun, a good kid with a BB gun. Uh, right. <laughs> well, there were, in both of the movies this week um, had weird echoes of Christmas movies. That one being A Christmas Story. Um, <laughs> you know, um, the other one I'll get to later. <laughs> yeah, and uh, actually uh, there is a scene where uh, BBW Bruce Willis says, you're going to shoot my eye out, kid. Uh, <laughs> and then he does. And then he did, yeah. Yep. Um, and we, we skipped cheered. over the swimming pool scene. Oh, where yeah. There's there's this like vaguely racist moment where uh, they're... Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the white... You know, yeah, Dr. <laughs> Evil swimming in the pool and... Uh, Keenan Thompson comes up and he's like, you ought to get in. He's like, uh, I'm afraid I'm going to drown. And, like, oh, uh, yeah. They make the black guy <laughs> unable to swim. <laughs> but, uh, right. but it's not racist because he said it. Yeah. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, I don't know. There were a lot of freaking scenes in this movie that were entirely pointless. Uh, there was cliched line after cliched line. Nothing especially interesting. The special effects were awful. Like, uh, whenever yeah. a cage was driving, you could see, like, the green screen in the windows, and then, the like, they would, like, use, like, a Photoshop blur tool around the edge of things. That, like, you could see the blur tools ending to show that they were trying to hide that they just pasted this fucking thing in there. And, like, it was, it was bad. Yeah, it, very, it, very few redeemable qualities. Like, I'm, I'm not opposed to... Uh, the, the dystopian future movies. Oh, and, totally. And I guess... Uh, yeah, you man. know, there's a lot of them. Nobody did it quite as right as 2012. Uh, oh, yeah. starring John Cusack. Uh, Definitely well, the best one. What about the was, day after tomorrow? I don't know. You guys are forgetting one that we that's very close to the cage fight heart. Um, that being um, left behind. Oh, oh yes. yeah. No, I gotta say this one's better than Left Behind. I would it, take it, it over yeah. Left it's, it's bad, I, but I it's not that bad. Yeah, I couldn't suffer through that one. That um, was, but I feel like this movie suffered from what a lot of these dystopian future movies suffer from, which is that like they think that the premise alone is enough to like get by on. Like, oh, there's right. no water, and uh, if you're insubordinate in any way, we're gonna send you to a camp. Mm -hmm. uh, but then everything in between is just kind of like blah. So, yeah, it has right. no actual like it has an idea for a plot that got stretched <laughs> yeah. out and nothing really happens in it. It's it, the opposite of San Andreas, I think it was that rock movie. Yeah, where, where it's just the there, where, where where there's basically no plot but like action happening the entire time. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, it was pretty much yeah, it was a like um, yeah, Bizarro World version of that movie. This seemed like a bad <laughs> sci-fi channel movie. Yeah, and, um, I mean. It, I, the title sounds familiar, uh, like in a sense that I feel like I've seen a bad sci-fi channel movie like with a similar title, but I'm I can't really be sure. Yeah, but a uh, very predictable, very cliched, no substance, no good action scenes. Skip this one if yeah, you haven't great. already watched it. Yeah. Hey, not Jeez. to say that the other one, maybe you should skip that one too, and you probably should. But, <laughs> well, uh, yeah. right we'll get there soon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think, uh, any, anyone else have any little contributions here or, um, I, um, I, I don't have much to say about this movie, um, other than, yeah, skip it and, um, then skip the next one that we're going to talk about too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we're all in agreement then, <laughs> uh, Finally. but we're going to take a break real quick and then we'll be back to talk about trespass. Bye -bye. Cue that break music. <laughs> break time. Oh yeah. Uh, 
I'm doing it. I'm going to open the dirt cola. Oh, jeez. This is just the oddest fucking flavor, because it's not exactly dirt. But it's earthy. Oh. It smells like a fucking, like a bunch of spices were like distilled in some water or something. Like, <laughs> or potpourri that got wet. Mm. It's very strange. It's hard to, it tastes like essential oils or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like you, like you accidentally drank your perfume or something. Yeah, because it's like almost <laughs> lavendery. I don't want anything to do with that. Okay, <laughs> sorry. It's got like a weird lavender aftertaste to it. Mm-hmm. It does. Huh. Hey, Eric, you want to try some of this? Uh, no, but we're recording. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey, everyone. Hey. I'm drinking dirt soda. He's it's drinking dirt soda for the actually it was just the anniversary of Alice in Chains' dirt. And so we got a bunch of dirt soda in here, <laughs> yeah. and uh, we're fucking jamming out to uh, Rain When I Die. Just <laughs> rain when got I die. Got a little die. bit of that Cantrell magic. Heck yeah. Ooh. yeah I don't know yeah. why I expected that to be different the second time. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to finish that. Uh, but <laughs> I don't know how a person could. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> so, so this movie. Trespass. Uh, this movie. Boston, Massachusetts. Oh, sorry. Nope. I I worked forever for that. What? Yeah, go go <laughs> for it. I, it's over now. I already played it. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> oh. It's, uh, and, uh, it's Boston, Massachusetts. Ah. Yeah, I couldn't pause it in time. Uh, and if any if any of our listeners are in Boston currently, I just want to um, apologize uh, because. It's got to fucking suck to live in You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, uh, so it, it came out in 2011. It's rated R. Directed by Joel Schumacher, who uh, I personally know from directing both Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, who also directed uh, The Lost Boys, St. Elmo's Fire. Um, yeah, really wasn't expecting Joel Schumacher to come up in our um, uh, cage rundown, honestly. <laughs> Especially for a movie I've never heard, a no-name movie from fucking, like, not, what, eight years ago? <laughs> yeah, and if his, uh, if his Wikipedia is accurate, this is the last film that he directed, uh, and he went on to do, like, I think two episodes of House of Cards after this, but... Oh. Uh, Wait, he did House of Cards, really? He, two episodes, I <laughs> guess. Uh, he uh, Wait. guest directed. Did Joel Schumacher do a version of Phantom of the Opera? Yes, uh, to the 2004 four version of phantom of the opera yeah weird weird choice but <laughs> yeah he's he's honestly got just look up his filmography he's got a weird rap sheet mm -hmm. um usually with like uh you know your david finchers and whatnot their their choices yeah. are consistent yeah somewhat you, you, um, you can see the the line of thought that goes behind it at least right well i mean i david finchers may be a bad example because i just remember that alien 3 exists oh yeah uh, well that was his first movie i think was it I think so. I know he's since disowned it because yeah. like he has made a lot of really good movies <laughs> and uh, that is not one of them. So. Yeah. Uh, so this was produced by Saturn Films, which Cage owns, and also New F New Image Films with the new spelt like new metal, uh, which I think mm -hmm. we talked about. They produced yeah, some other movies. It, made was, a joke um, <laughs> it was the, uh, the music video for uh, oh, yeah. that, that Rich Homie Kwan song. Uh, Freak on a leash. Type of way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Ah. I'm sorry. I was thinking of the rich homie Quan cover of Freak on a Leash. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. think the reason I thought of that is because it was directed by Joel Schumacher. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so uh, it had a budget of $35 million. And uh, I'm a little confused here. And you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little confused here because I got two different numbers for the growth. I think the gross number that I have of ten million it also includes home sales and direct to video sales and stuff like that. But from what I gathered, this movie made twenty four thousand ninety four dollars and then was pulled from theaters after ten days total. Yeah. And um Well, why would they ever do that? <laughs> well, I think it was it was a combination of things where it was like it was released in theaters and direct to video at the same time, but then it got like pulled immediately from theaters and then put on DVD. Uh, um, because one of the, uh, one of the trivia facts is that it was like the, of, at the time, the fastest, uh, transition from 
theater to DVD since that uh Fucking from Justin to Kelly. From Justin to Kelly. <laughs> yes, I looked that up. Which, if you don't remember that, that it stars Kelly Clarkson and Justin what's his face from Justin the first Guarini. season. Guarini was, from American Idol. It was like right after the first season of American Idol. <laughs> yeah. For some reason, they decided to capitalize on these two people's like chemistry or mm. lack thereof, <laughs> and they released this movie that yeah. the I've seen the trailer. I remember seeing the trailer for that movie like on dvds that i rented like yeah. in the early 2000s and even the trailer seems completely fake like it it looks like a prank i've watched clips of this for some reason and <laughs> kelly clarkson seems like completely out of her element here like she doesn't want to be in this role and justin guarini yeah it seems it, like a big dumb doofy well, let's, <laughs> let's put this in context both of them had just been on a reality show and that was the only time they had been in front of a camera mm. and someone decided to cast them in a movie so i yeah i, I think this was before even like since you've been gone came out and stuff yeah. like that so. yeah because i i really feel like like it was that summer right after that first se season of american idol i don't know why i remember that but um yeah um but yeah that's that's uh the fun fact i got there well i wonder if they included sales from the movie hostage <laughs> in the sales maybe because it's well, I haven't seen Hostage, so I'll have to see. Well, yeah, you have. It's just they took Bruce Willis out of it, and they made it a Nicolas Cage movie. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. Um, and, and they called it Trespass? <laughs> is that what this movie's called? I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, Trespass. It's easy to forget because... Uh, it's Hostage. Yeah. yeah uh, this is... They just kind of slapped a one-word title on it, and they're like, it's semi-relevant. Uh, <laughs> and the so the metric for how fast it got booted from the theaters 18 days mm -hmm. in the theaters. Uh, Justin DeKelly was 29. So literally there was more time between our last recording and this recording than there yeah. was between <laughs> yeah. between this going to theaters and being put out on Less TV. Less than three weeks <laughs> and it was gone. Oh, um, I, have, I have a couple more fun facts. that, that, that This one actually is a, I thought, legitimate fun fact that during filming of the movie, uh, so we haven't talked about any of the characters yet, but Nick Cage plays like this rich guy and people break into his house and they want his money. They had already started filming when Nicolas Cage decided he didn't want to play the husband. He wanted to play one of the kidnappers. Um, but then like uh, apparently uh, Nicole Kidman plays his wife. Um, he wanted to switch roles and uh, then like the next day decided to just keep going as as scheduled yeah. <laughs> he just had, he just had one day where he was like day. i want to be saying what that guy's saying instead. <laughs> and then he slept on it and that didn't happen <laughs> like, honestly baffling yeah I'm, I'm not really sure what caused that but uh i don't know <laughs> i mean i guess i the he is good at playing craziness sometimes, mm -hmm. so maybe he was looking to get some of his crazy back on. But then the director is like, "No, I want this movie to be unbearably <laughs> boring." Yeah. Not but yeah, the the main kidnapper is played by uh, Ben Mendelsohn from lots of stuff. He's in one of the new Star Wars movies. Um, he was in. Wait, who's he playing Star Wars? He's the old dude in. Uh, is it? I don't remember which one. He's a uh, old white guy. Oh, okay. Old, old white guy number. Yeah. Uh, not a lead. Oh, he, yeah. he was like a lead baddie guy. Mm, uh, okay. And he was also in Batman Forever. And, oh no, Nicole Kidman was in Batman Forever. And he was in The Dark Knight Rises. So he's Batman adjacent. Um, and uh, he was also in Knowing. So he oh, shit. has been knowing Nicolas Cage for about two years at this point. <laughs> uh, um. Yeah. Oh, so so was was Charlie from Lost in this movie? I was trying to figure it out the entire time without actually opening my phone. Um, no, he wasn't. No, that wasn't him. him. Although it, I wish it, it that kinda, was him. It kind of looked like him though, didn't it? Yeah. 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 Maybe I, he was. He was discount. Uh, what's that guy's name again? Dominic Monaghan. Dominic Monaghan. That's it. Yeah. Is that his name? I just knew him as Charlie. Yeah. I, yeah. I think of him <laughs> only mostly from the Lord of the Rings. But then uh, when I watched Lost, I was like, oh, it's like Pippin. I, I think of him <laughs> as uh, that Lord of the Rings guy who was. On lost <laughs> hey a little bit of the both worlds you know i like it um but yeah I, well there's a lot of so there's there's not just one kidnapper there's like a whole troop of them and they're wearing masks and 
there was a few times where I was like, I think I recognize that guy. I've, is this is this that guy? And then it was none of the people that I thought. It was. <laughs> uh, See, I was I was exp- uh, like, I don't know, Nicole Kidman being in the movie kind of weirded me out because I've yeah. gotten so used at this point to seeing no names <laughs> in any right. movie that's been released starring Nicolas Cage since like 2007 or whatever. Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, I I can't think of many other movies that we've watched so far that had such a like uh, a an all star like cast. Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't want to say all star cast, but I guess this there is are pretty some close. stars. Yeah, yeah, there's... and and Joel Schumacher being involved is definitely the biggest director we've seen up to this point. Right. I think. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, when I saw the the cast, I was. I was confused for a second because I thought maybe this was a good movie that I hadn't heard about for some reason. Mm. Uh, but it turns out uh, most of the people uh, involved, you know, want you to forget this one. Yeah. So uh, I yeah. guess we, we haven't gone into the plot at all yet. Uh, no. Uh, well, uh, quick, I want to say in Rotten Tomatoes, this has a 10% in the tomato meter, 22% audience rating. So uh, actually the audience rating for this one and the previous one were exactly the same. But oh. this one, the critics didn't like it as much. Apparently they thought the other movie was better. It just well, based off sheer number of positive reviews. So maybe yeah, some of the other ones were like Breitbart reviews or something. But. Right. Oh shit! There's, there's a lot of Russian bots reviewing the Humanity Bureau. So, but uh, <laughs> uh, jumping into a plot summary here. Cage is driving a convertible, talking about selling diamonds. He drives up to his big multi-million dollar mansion with his fancy house and his wife, Nicole Kidman, and their teenage daughter, who I don't know the actress's name, but in the movie she's named Avery, I think. Uh, Avery wants to go to a party, and she's real mad she can't go, uh, so she sneaks out of the house uh, with her friend that is driving what I think was a BMW Z4. Rich kid. Uh, yeah, r- r- rich kid. 16 year old driving a fucking bmw so yeah um sadly he is not one of the victims <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. uh so cage is about to ditch his family dinner his dinner with his wife to go sell some diamonds for work because that's what he does he's a diamond salesman yeah, and people who want diamonds they want them fucking right now <laughs> yeah. and all times of night <laughs> <laughs> um so <laughs> Just. his wife kind of objects and like we get one of those typical like movie scenes where it's like, oh, look, it's the dad who works too much and neglects yeah. his family. Um, so in the middle of an argument between him and his wife, uh, some people pose as cops and are like, hey, let us in. And uh, they're like, OK, so they let him in through the gate in the security system. And then they immediately tackle Cage and uh, wife at gunpoint. Hold them, and they're like, where's the daughter? Because they aren't really cops. They just posed as cops to get in. And uh, yeah. here's the lesson, kids. Don't let cops into your house. <laughs> like, uh, it doesn't yeah. matter if they're real or not. Like they're <laughs> Exactly. And what was their reasoning? Uh... There was a rash of burglaries. Yeah. Um, yeah, down the road, the movie Hostage had just happened. So, <laughs> so like, uh, hey, yeah, um, we... Um... Were cops that showed up at your house for no reason? If you could just go ahead and press the button, open the gate on your big rich man house, mm. and let us come hang out. Yeah, this movie also kind of reminded me of The Purge. If you've seen the first yeah. Purge movie, except was... without the whole stupid crime is legal for twenty four hours. Yeah, thing. this this movie gave me strong. I thought that was the happening. <laughs> what is <laughs> the happening? Though? The happening is the one where uh, I th- Mark Wahlberg uh, lays down in front of a giant lawnmower, <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, see, I yeah, I never saw either. I you know, yeah, the happening. I, I just the, heard somebody refer to it as the crappening, and I always thought that was really funny. <laughs> it is really funny uh, because it's so accurate. Uh, it's like a it's a, it's uh, an apocalyptic movie where the trees are killing us all or something. Yeah, oh the trees God. are releasing toxins that make people yeah. go crazy. Yeah. Um, but I was gonna say this M. Night movie, Shyamalan's finest film. <laughs> I yeah, believe. besides uh, <laughs> Lady in the Water and um, Avatar. Oh, yeah, The Last Airbender. The Last Airbender, I'm sorry. Avatar um, was taken. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, Wait, which one's the anime kid and which one's Fern Gully? Uh, Wait, what? You're thinking uh, of Korra. Korra? The Legend Korra? of. Oh, is that is that Fern Gully too? Or, <laughs> I, I don't know, know what Fern Gully is was, really. The, the, it was there was an, a movie with blue people that was actually Fern Gully. Oh yeah, just that, like that was CGI. that was Avatar, James Cameron's, yeah. and, and then uh, oh, okay. You didn't mean Fern Gully, you meant Pocahontas. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it was Pocahontas and Fern, they're all the same movie. <laughs> yeah, and <Fair>. dances <laughs> with wolves and all that. Um, but 
what I was going to say <laughs> is <laughs> that this movie uh, gave me strong panic room vibes, minus the panic room. But uh, I haven't seen that one either. I, it's good. I, I think never that's saw a David that either, Fincher actually. movie. I think. Oh, really? Maybe hmm. I could I be wrong. Huh? But it's really good. It has Dwight Yoakam. So, oh shit! Does it really? It really does. Oh my god! Maybe I have to see this. <laughs> yeah, for Dwight, for the Dwight Yoakam uh, character alone, <laughs> worth it. I would believe that one hundred percent. Um, but yeah, I, does Vince Gill make like a cameo anywhere? I don't think so, but he sh- he really should. <laughs> cool. Maybe they can go golfing in it. Be good. <laughs> uh, sorry. No, um, Carry on. <laughs> Talk about this garbage movie. <laughs> Whatever. So, summarizing the the four people that broke in, just because this is the way I'm going to refer to them. I don't know if you guys are going to get on with this, but uh, there are four people. There's main guy who, who, yeah. who is the main guy. He was played ben by Ben Mendelsohn. Like, ben Mendelsohn. Yeah. There's burly guy who's like the big one with like the Duke Nukem haircut. Who's <laughs> like you know like yeah. What's the, the sun's uh, not yellow? It's chicken. <laughs> uh, could we call him BBW Bruce Willis for? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we could. Yeah, BBW Bruce Willis. Uh, there is. <laughs> There is a uh, meth head lady uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> meth. who meth. was uh, meth in purple dress. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Her, uh, her B story, I guess if you could call it that, uh, her, her little backstory in this movie was extremely pertinent to the, the overall structure of the story. They had, right. they, they had to keep talking about they, it constantly. They right. Had, it was just, yeah, it was crazy how they mentioned that she was there. <laughs> yeah. I had to rewind a couple times to figure out why I was watching well, her like smoke meth in a bathroom. Yeah. yeah, yeah this is was relevant. And wander around in her underwear and put on clothes. Yeah. <laughs> this is a good moment for me to say that like the teen daughter, the, the, the teen daughter, the wife, and the uh, the meth lady, they all looked enough alike that like we had to sit and debate for a while if that was the teen daughter smoking meth, if that was the wife yeah. smoking meth, oh, yeah, or if that the was the was. yeah, because they didn't really. It was basically like they kind of they made the the meth lady so forgettable that like by the time that she was in there smoking meth and watching videos of the daughter. Um, like you had forgotten that she was ever there in the first place. So it was like, holy shit. So like, well, cause it's like, they did like a, yeah. one of those flashback scenes where it was showing the wife and the, you know, the dude from lost. And <laughs> um, then just like real quick, they just flashed at the meth lady smoking meth. And the, and it was like, Oh shit. Is this something they did together? Like, <laughs> Damn, this is nefarious. But then, yeah. yeah, I mean, literally every time they, they showed meth lady on screen, they were just reminding you who she was and then moving on. Mm-hmm. It was, not, it was, not even who she was, just that she was there. Right, know? that she was just, there and that she she's the junkie one. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Well, they, um, uh, yeah. Sorry, who's the fourth? Oh, the fourth is who I will call a creepy psychosis dude. I only call him psychosis because one of the other people says you have psychosis right. why aren't you taking your meds at some point in the movie can we but, just call him charlie from lost though oh yeah we can call him charlie from lost yeah so he's uh the dude from lost uh is also there and uh we'll we'll, we'll find more out about all these people main guy bbw bruce willis <laughs> meth head lady and uh charlie from lost wait so, which one of these guys is the guy that i described as lover boy uh, yeah, that was that was Charlie from Lost. Okay, <laughs> yeah. okay, Lover Boy. Yeah. Mm. So, <laughs> so uh, we cut to Avery at the party, and the Avery is the daughter, and there's some kid there trying to sleep with her in a, a douchebag in a purple hoodie, being like, "Yeah, look at this. I got like two hundred thousand dollars in a safe here and a bunch of coke. <laughs> the two hundred thousand dollars in case like nine eleven happens again, and I need a bunch of cash." And, uh, yeah, it's yeah. so very cool. fun scene where <laughs> shit's just... Kool Aid, bro. <laughs> It's like, my dad's a fucking idiot, and I know the code to his safe where he keeps all his cocaine. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I really wanted to punch that kid in the face, but yeah, none of the characters in this movie are relatable, by the way. They're all, like, very rich people that yeah. are all... You know that subreddit, Am I the Asshole? Oh, yeah. This movie really just stunk of the uh, everyone sucks here, ESH yep. result. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways, go on. Yeah. And they were also all pointing at each other and saying, you're the asshole. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, 
Then we cut back, and the the trespassers, as we may call <laughs> these robbers, uh, are threatening Cage and uh, Nicole Kidman into opening the safe that has the diamonds, because they know he's got diamonds. And Cage is like, no, I'm not giving you the goddamn diamonds. And he's like, the diamonds have, like, micro laser inscriptions that'll be used to track you down, and you gotta get someone to shave those off, and you'll need me if you want to do that, otherwise. Yeah. And they're like... He basically tells them, like, whatever... Uh, other meth head you sell these diamonds to <laughs> like you're not gonna get anywhere close to what you think you're gonna get or you're gonna get caught mm. but uh they don't fucking care <laughs> they, they think he's we're lying. criminals we fuck, we're already here <laughs> wait I gotta hear what he's saying now I heard it now put a gun back to his head <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's a lot there's a lot of kind of uh cat and mouse between like uh, okay we're gonna put a gun to Nicolas Cage's head but hold on hold on let him speak he wants the gun out of his face. We're, we're being cool. But then the gun's back in his face. <laughs> right. yeah, um, it was just, did you look away? <laughs> then you miss nothing but the same things happening over again. <laughs> there's one scene where he just he very innocently rips a fart and they fucking put a shotgun in his mouth. So Right. Yeah. He just, <laughs> sorry, you need me and my farts. <laughs> My fart is the password. <laughs> <laughs> it is a stench analyzer. <laughs> I got it from these pirates <laughs> on this boat or on this school bus. <laughs> Sorry. That's a different movie. A, a different movie that I choose to forget because we don't ever have to talk about it again. No, but, well, uh, <laughs> wait until the end of this segment and we'll find out. <laughs> uh, the uh, So they threaten Cage's wife and... Uh, the dude from Lost. Uh, this is why we call him Lover Boy. He gets very angry that they may any of the kid or the the robbers may hurt his wife. So uh, or Cage's, Cage's wife, Nicole wife. Kidman, Nicole yeah. Kidman, uh, because this random dude really loves Nicole Kidman for some reason. And there's got flashbacks showing that he worked as the security guard who installed their security system, I guess. And, yeah, and they uh, made some very sexy eye contact. Oh, yeah. And he wanted to fuck her, and he was in a pool. And yes. <laughs> yeah, at this point, it's really kind of laying out as, like, the longest, like, cuck porn of all time. <laughs> yeah. But anyways. Uh, yeah, it's it basically, uh, because we've already uh, set up that Nicolas Cage is always off selling big diamonds. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's given this uh, security system guy plenty of time to fuck his wife. Yep. Right. And fall in love. And don't worry, we'll, exactly. if, you, if you miss this flashback this time, well, you'll see it three or four more times, more right. or less the same exact footage. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, you can and, see what they were going for, but they swung three times. At three pitches that were nowhere near them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and this this uh, Charlie from Lost. Uh, what, what would we call him? Uh, um, oh, Lover boy. Yeah, sorry, yeah. That, I couldn't remember my nickname for him. Uh, BBW Charlie from Lost. <laughs> uh, he like he's obviously he's had an established relationship with Nicole Kidman, and he's uh, I guess subjectively a hunk, but. He gives off these strong, strong incel vibes. Yes. Yeah, the yes, whole time. Yeah, I was gonna. Say, yeah, he's incel Charlie. <laughs> yeah, it's he's a, a very BBW incel Charlie. <laughs> right from <He's>, Lost. <laughs> yeah. It surprises me that he's not an, a real cop because he uh, seems pretty prone to domestic abuse, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> mental health issues uh, and uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, and a lack of qualifications. <laughs> <laughs> he's got all the criteria. So at this point, like they're talking about how they have an anesthetic or something in a needle, and I don't know the story about this thing in the needle changes like eight times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it's like we are so broke that we need all of your diamond money, but also we have these rare. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, we have medicine. We have right. rare. <laughs> we have expensive anesthesia for surgery that may be lethal injection drugs. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, honestly, they probably could have made a few bucks selling that to some asshole. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't know. But uh, so Avery gets home from the party because she left because she's tired of a dude in a purple hoodie snorting coke, I guess. I don't yeah, know. Well, she stopped in the bedroom to smoke some meth and then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. But I, I forgot to mention that at one point we get an establishing shot showing that meth head lady smoking meth. <laughs> I, for, for some and, and it really looks like the teen daughter. Yeah. <laughs> so you assume she's coming home. I assumed, honestly, she, that was her at the party. 
and she was like smoking. Right. It's like, why, you, why did she change? Yeah. yeah. That <laughs> makes so much more sense than one of the people that broke into the house took a break to smoke meth upstairs. <laughs> right. Like, I, 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 I get it. She, she's, she needs her fix. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's probably been like ten minutes. <laughs> right. Just like you, you know, when you you're pulling off a big heist, uh, and you're 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 really knee deep in it, the first thing you do is you got to take a fucking smoke break. Yeah, so. <laughs> right off the bat, just quick sig break. Um, so then the main guy says like, "Hey, I need either a hundred eighty thousand dollars or a kidney, and I'm getting one of them the one of the worst ways." And he's uh got that file with anesthesia. At some point, like, he gets creepy with, with Nicole Kidman, and yeah. she steals it from him, like, secretly. Yeah, well, just after establishing that she doesn't have pockets in her dress, um, yeah. which is why she doesn't have her phone, but then somehow she's concealing uh, a loaded syringe <laughs> from everybody. Oh, yeah. I'm um, not exactly sure how that's for, going for the For the following, like, fucking 50 minutes, yeah. um, but anyways. <laughs> but, um, so... Finally, Cage is convinced to open the safe, and they see there's nothing in there at all. And uh, Cage is like, well, see, we're broke, because I got fired, and the bank is going to repossess everything, and everything's fucked, and I don't have anything. I just go around, like, tr you know, trying to make money, because i am you know, got to live this fake, rich asshole lifestyle. Cause he it's... opens his briefcase, and he just has a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in it. <laughs> <laughs> what um, the fuck is that? Are there diamonds in here? <laughs> <laughs> this is a diamond. <laughs> And uh, yeah, he's uh, yeah, he, he proceeds to lose an eye and duct tape the sandwich over. <laughs> yeah. his, um, That's sorry. what the briefcase is for in case any fucking kid with a BB gun comes up at you. Yeah, so you give him a swirly, <laughs> give yourself a sandwich eye patch. Um, continue. The, uh, the rich kid is actually the kid from Humanity Bureau, uh, all grown up. Mm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Humanity Bureau 2, <laughs> trespass, but uh. Cage then decides to volunteer his kidney, just saying, like, fine, take my kidney, just don't hurt my daughter. And then the robber is like, I don't need a fucking kidney, that was a bunch of bullshit. Because this movie will just, like, take a plot line and then drag it out for about ten minutes and, and then cut like, that plot line shit. Yeah, it's, it, 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 is, it does it all the time. Whereas the previous movie just kind of reveled in its own plot holes, this one is like, all right, well, let's play out the plot holes until they're obvious plot holes, and then let's scrap them. <laughs> in real yeah. time <laughs> there's just like um a lot of elaborate bullshit that turned out to be nothing mm -mm. and 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 not for any gain really. like there wasn't a a twist we're like oh fuck he took cage's kidney and he doesn't even need it he, what a savage right <laughs> <laughs> but um <laughs> and then uh we we so we get kind of through a little bit of um a little bit of like in intuition from Cage that the the main guy and the meth head lady, they're they're kind of being put up to this. This isn't them. They have a reason they want this money. They're not the you know yeah. The money doesn't end with them. So they're gonna kill Cage and Nicole Kidman, but some shit goes down and they manage to break loose. Uh, Cage breaks the glass so that the security system like alerts the real cops. Uh, yeah, or the real, somebody. Yeah, somebody. And uh, the robbers catch Cage, but Cage manages to stop the guy, I think, by injecting that anesthetic, which the guy told him yeah. was lethal injection drugs at this point. But and, then and instead of unloading the whole thing, there's still like yeah. way much left in it when he's done. Mm -hmm. Well, they can see actually through the microphone um, how much I was gesturing with my hands, yeah. which was about a, a big baby dick worth a, <laughs> you know. Maybe he was, uh, uh, he was saving some of the anesthesia for himself. He's like, hey, maybe once these guys get the fuck out of here, I can take the I'm edge off. I'm going to load up on this shit. Go, go hang out with Tony at the party, and <laughs> we can get into his safe. So uh, uh, Cage takes the guy's shotgun, uh, but he gets stopped like right away. I think they shoot him in the leg or something. Uh, yeah. And uh, the robbers like force Avery to call off the security company's dispatch. Uh, and she's just like, yeah, the password is this and uh, don't come because like I had a party here and uh, I don't want the cops to come here. Cause, and yeah, yeah, I don't know it, why she didn't just like lie. I feel like most security systems like that have like a false fake well, out password you can use. Yeah, well, well, they, 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 they even established that, that they do. Yeah. 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 On the, uh. yeah. And then they already knew that they were using the fake code that pretends like, uh, yeah, uh. no, it was. Yeah. Um, 
Okay. Well, yeah, it's like sure. if you was this movie just like a big statement to like oppose in you know like security systems in rich people homes like yeah maybe so it kind of uh, seemed like a big commercial about what could go wrong with your security system. This was yeah. uh, a <laughs> yeah, Joel Schumacher was trying to convince his Hollywood friends to not have security systems in their homes so he could break in <laughs> and take uh, all their shit. And that's why he hasn't directed a movie since. Because he really wants to steal some of Spielberg's Oscars. Right. <laughs> they made a big difference in those 10 days the shit was in the theater. He stole <laughs> Nicolas Cage's copy of uh, Detective Comics number one. Right. So uh, after after the main, the main guy shot Cage in the leg, uh, he starts monologuing to him uh, oh, like yeah. a villain does and tells him like, <laughs> You know, actually, I lost $180,000 worth of cocaine that was fronted to me, and now I got to get the money back to pay him off. And uh, so you better give me this money because now you know my <laughs> motives for real. <laughs> During that time, the security company does show up, like one person from it, not the cops, uh, yeah. just the security person, said like, hey, we just need a signature here. And uh, the main guy shows up and he's like, OK, uh, let me sign that. I am definitely Nicolas Cage. And then before you can do that, lover boy, Charlie, <laughs> oh boy. BBW, BBW. Yeah, Charlie. BBW Charlie, just caps motherfucking security guy right in the head. Then he goes over because he worked for that same security company and gives them the it's all OK code over the walkie. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing that he actually knew that guy and he probably like took his lunch out of the break room, and he was like, I'm going to fucking pop this dude while I got a chance. <laughs> yeah. Motherfucker, teach you to eat my sandwich. <laughs> you could, Bitch, I got psychosis, and I'm taking Tic Tacs. <laughs> I'll show you to heat up salmon and Brussels sprouts in a group area. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, at this point, like, the main guy is like, it's revealed that him and BBW Charlie are brothers, uh, and yeah. he, and he's like, "Why aren't you taking your pills?" And he's like, "I do take the pills." And he's like, "These are Tic Tacs," Rah! and pours them all in his mouth and then spits them out. And uh, so then Avery is like, "Hey, uh, well, if you guys need money that bad, like, you know, there's like two hundred thousand dollars in the safe at this fucking party that we can go to." And they're like, "Yeah." Yeah, let's go get that money. And there's coke. Yeah, and there's coke too. So meth head ladies all in. She's like, well, this oh, is yeah. this is after she had clearly learned that this teenage girl is not trustworthy after she bashed her face off of the Oh yeah, under the, the promise of Vicodin. Yeah. Off the glass and like it all for kind of nothing. <laughs> yeah, all of that amounted to but, nothing. But at all. This this is leading up to my favorite scene in the movie. Oh yeah. Um Oh wait, when when she's driving? Yeah, and okay. she yeah. Mm. I mean, it's it's a combination of magic and just, you know, like hilarious um outcomes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah, before that, as they're as they leave and Avery's driving Meth Head Lady over to that party, Meth Head Lady, uh your Cage is um convinces his wife. He's like this creepy fucking dude right here, you know, fucking BBW Charlie. I know you're in love with him. Why don't you go run off with him? And like, I think it's supposed to be implied, you know, that he's like, I just want you to be safe and get out of here and I'm yeah. going to die. It's cool. Um, then we cut back from that. Uh, Avery is driving meth head lady to the party. And uh, Meth Head Lady is just like, I'm going to kill everyone at that party. Kill, kill, kill. Boom, right. boom, after, boom. After establishing the, you know, the clear motives of all poor people, jealousy of rich people. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. You know, Where that, she's that ranting about, like, like, do oh, you think you're worth $200,000 to have sex? Yeah, oh, yeah. You're worth that much more than me? You know, oh, yeah. I'm going to kill everyone there. You know, um, completely missing the point. Looking and then she she <clears throat> she resolves the issue. She decides to uh, slam on the gas going to the same curve that like her friend in the red car um, almost rolled the car around yeah. when they were going to the party. She slams on the gas and drives straight at a stop sign or a you know like swer a, swer a swervy road because yeah. um, it was just a it was just a, a street sign it, it, that she plowed into. I that that it, she would have just ran. It looked like a power line pole or something was behind it. I think was it okay. Yeah. Maybe I missed it here. You can. <clears throat> read oh it no, up. that's okay. No, she drives like full speed ahead right into that, and then cl clicks off the lady's seatbelt because the seatbelt saves you at a sixty mile per hour crash. Like yeah, that. yeah. 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 <laughs> she walks away unscathed while the lady is just gone. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's completely. The true message gone. of this movie: <laughs> click it or ticket. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
Uh, so then Burly <sighs> Dude wakes up after being knocked out with this anesthetic that he claimed was lethal injection medicine, but doesn't seem to be because he's not dead. Uh, he gets up and he tries to stop Psychosis Dude from getting away with Nicole Kidman because Nicole Kidman and him are about to leave. Like, Nicole Kidman under duress, not wanting to do it, but she's like, okay, you know, Cage wants me to go. My husband but, told me to. Yeah. Burly dude gets up, tries to stop him. He's like, you're not getting out of this without paying you, you, my boss, man. And uh, then main guy shows up, shoots Burly dude. And then Burly dude tells him that, you know, BBW Charlie is the reason for all of this. It's like they're just slapping you with weird revelations left and right. Yeah. I don't really know the meaning. Why? Why? I don't know. why. It, it just kind of <laughs> felt like um, they were in the writer's room. They had like 10 different people say, what if this happened? And then they just threw it all in there. Yeah. So uh, somehow Burly Dude gets taken out of the picture again. I don't recall how. Um, but then, no, no, him and BBW Charlie start fighting and they knock into a wall in a room that seems to be like under remodeling and they bust off the drywall and just piles of cash pour out. And uh, then uh, they're like, you know, hey, I knew there was cash here, and I think I think they kill Burly Dude. I don't know. He he's just not there anymore for the rest of the movie. I, I, I don't regard. But uh, main guy is like, wait, why didn't you tell me about all this cash? And Cage is like, that's for my family. So when the bank repossesses everything, we still have something to get by. So it's like, you know, I honestly, this whole plan was so fucking stupid. If you just gave him the money and then reported it to the police, like I, insurance would have covered him for this type of yeah. thing, I believe. But I don't know. It, uh, uh, I know he was trying is, to hide it from the bank and not report it, but it's all fucking. It, it, yeah, the whole plan uh, is is convoluted beyond belief, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, not surprisingly, backfires in pretty much everybody's faces. Yeah. So, so uh, then Avery shows up again. She walked here after all this time, I guess, unless the car was still drivable after the whole front quarter was destroyed. <laughs> but um. And she shows up with a gun, threatening main dude and uh, BBW Charlie. And uh, main guy is like, well, man, oh, you're going to kill me, huh? Well, how about I just fucking kill Nicole Kidman right here? And then BBW Charlie is like, no, and shoots him right in the head because he just loves Nicole Kidman. He, that, and, that must have been some freaking good married lady sex that he had because yeah. he is uh, positively... Uh, psychosis <laughs> um, yeah uh, but we reveal apparently through flashback at, at this point that uh they never had sex he walked he swam in her pool for some reason and then walked up and kissed her and she was like i think you should go and he was like i know you're unhappy we gonna fuck and then she's like no <laughs> and then he's like but yeah and she's it's, like no so the strong incel vibes are starting to make sense <laughs> uh so yeah um now, after all this, BBW Charlie is the only remaining living man and uh, or living burglar. Yeah. And uh, after all of this, Cage is like laying there dying, bleeding out from his gunshot wound. And like there's some gas spilling for some reason. I don't know where it came from. <laughs> like, Yeah, I do not recall. This whole scene could have been completely skipped if she would have just shot Charlie. But she oh, yeah. doesn't. She has a gun in her hand. She's ready to shoot him. And then she hands the gun to him. Yeah, Avery does that for some fucking reason that I don't understand. Uh, and then, yeah, all of the same chaos continues. Yeah. So... As the gas is spilling, Cage lights it on fire, along with all the cash that was in the window, and nail guns BBW Charlie to the floor. Oh, yeah, because he's, he runs in and is trying to grab as much cash as he can before it all burns. Yeah. And Cage is like, watch this bitch. Yeah, and then uh, <laughs> the wife tries to rescue Cage, and then Charlie's like, oh, I knew you. He goes on an incel rant, essentially. Yeah. And then... then I don't know. She kicks him over into the fire and fucking they rescue Cage and get out of the burning building and they lay there in the backyard while the house is burning and they hear emergency services showing up and they all lay in a bloody group huddle. In and the then Keenan Thompson pulls up <laughs> yeah. and they shoot him yeah. and the movie ends. Uh, but yeah, overall thoughts. Well, uh, I, there, there's a lot to take out of this movie. Um, and I think the most important thing is that at the end of the day, the 
hot lady just ends up with the Chad. So oh, yeah. Freaking. The real uh, Chad, not yeah, the so, incel. <laughs> so paint your face like the Joker, boys. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to the movies. Time to shoot up a theater. <laughs> like, I liked Hostage. I thought it was a great movie. I When I was in high school, I that's one of the few movies I've watched multiple times in a row because I enjoyed it. So it, it was just watching hostage but i don't know you bad. guys go hostage but bland well it was they they took the premise out of the movie you know that being bruce willis being a hostage hostage negotiator negotiator mm-hmm. and um just kind of left like kind of like a slapstick shit show and you know in its place like you know it's like yeah let's just ramp up what happens in the rich people's house instead <laughs> it's just a rewrite of the movie um but that said you know i liked that movie so i don't know i'd this wasn't that bad. I mean, it 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 was really bad, but you know, yeah, it was I, based on a pretty good movie. So, if if this movie sounds <clears throat> vaguely interesting to you, there's there's a half dozen other movies that you could watch instead. Yeah, uh, that would probably deliver and be a little bit more satisfying. So, yeah, my my thoughts on this were, despite being only ninety minutes, it still felt too long somehow. Like yeah. I I felt like it could have wrapped up, you know, quite a bit earlier. It's all over the place. There's too many plot twists that go nowhere and don't matter anyways. Um, th- there's tons of flashbacks for some reason that just kill yeah. the, the momentum of the movie. Like, honestly, they could have cut out all of the bits about, like, you know, weird, you know, BBW Charlie's thing with Nicole Kidman. Like, we didn't need to know the backstory. We could have just kind of seen that it was creepy. You know, like, leave it, leave it out. It would have yeah. been all right. It would have it- made the pacing a lot better, too. Um, yeah, if you're going to have flashbacks, I feel like you you kind of need to commit to uh, establishing that it, there's a certain style that you're going for and the flashbacks contribute to that. Mm-hmm. There was none of that in this movie. There was just flashbacks we didn't really care about. They seemed out of, out of place and took you out of it completely. Yeah. And uh, and honestly, it felt like they were just trying to be like, look, she's a good person. She didn't actually cheat on him. She said no. And it's like. You know, it doesn't matter. Like, even if yeah. she did cheat on him, he's still being a creepy incel weirdo. Like, like right. it, it, we, the, we didn't need that to make this any more relevant to the movie. You know what I mean? Like, right. He, he is uh, the villain in any scenario uh, <laughs> that that occurs. And yeah. But uh, yeah, I didn't uh, I didn't like this movie, but. I mean, it's OK. I don't know. I, uh, Damn, he loved this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when he said I didn't like this movie, he had his fingers crossed in our faces. <laughs> uh, shut up, guys. It's not a video podcast. God. <laughs> and that's why. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Those are my thoughts. Any, any, anybody else have any other things or should we move on to our vote? Um, I, yeah, all I really have to say is that uh, it, it started out as a movie that seemed like it, it could have been interesting um oh yeah but yeah watch hostage watch the panic room is a really good movie mm-hmm. this uh, you know it's not i mean the purge is not a good movie i know so it reminded me yeah of that, but, and if you if you decent. just want to see people going wild and murdering <laughs> whoever then watch the purge um but i can't think of any reason that that like, you would need to sit down and like watch or like this would be the movie that you pick to sit down and watch i it's mm-hmm. just Unless you're trying to see everything that Nicolas Cage made, or everything that Joel Schumacher made, or everything that Nicole Kidman made. Or um, everything that uh, BBW Charlie <laughs> from Lost has made. Yeah. I don't what know else has BBW is. Charlie been in? <laughs> I I do not know because he and wasn't actually in Lost. <laughs> he was. Not, I I can't. Oh, I've never seen him before that I know of. Uh, and. If you're just going off our descriptions I'm of these sorry. people, it's going to be really hard to look up the Bad cast market. and figure out who's who, probably. But, uh... Yeah. Not, not... <laughs> but if you watch it, God forbid. Honestly, if we had done a podcast on that guy's filmography, it probably would have been a lot shorter. Probably and, would have been done by now. Yeah. Oh, or it would have been, like, he's one of those guys who's, like, in a hundred thousand movies for, like, ten seconds. Mm-hmm. And it would have been the most painstaking process of all time. Shall we move on to the vote? Yeah. Hey, hey, Eric, can we get a countdown? Huh? Can we can we get a countdown? From what number? Pi. Uh, okay. 
Pick a, what's your favorite number, Eric? Um, 47. All right, countdown from 47. Oh, okay, okay. Three, two, one. Trespass. Trespass. <laughs> Sorry, I was caught off guard by there being an actual countdown. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that uh, tripped me the fuck up. Oh, we made a good move here. <laughs> You know, we haven't had a unanimous uh, decision in a while. I feel like, yeah, but I don't, I don't know. <clears throat> is, uh, does has we've one had of our three listeners made a Wikipedia page for our podcast yet, <laughs> where they're keeping track of this stuff? Uh, if you haven't, do that. Like, I'll give you a hug when I see you, if I ever see you. I know I there's won't. one person in that in Germany that consistently listens to our podcast, according to Podbean. So, uh, yeah. uh, shout out to that person. Shout out yeah. to our German listener. Honestly, I love you so much. That is not a joke. Um, and it is Nick's promise to um, hug you if he meets you. And it is my promise that I will kill you. Oh. Uh, we, we can work out a way to dodge Mike. I don't want you to be dead, but... Uh, no, no, I will not necessarily the German listener, but, um, oh, whoever makes the Wikipedia page, <laughs> oh, yes. I will kill you. <laughs> All right. Uh, um, sorry, I wasn't paying attention. What was that? Oh, we, we asked you for a countdown. <laughs> oh, nah. Okay. Um, that's what we needed. <laughs> uh, so next time, what movies are we going to be doing here? We've got Seeking Justice. And fire, yep, Firebirds. I for, I had to double check and make sure it wasn't Freebirds. But um, now that's a movie. <laughs> they um, sound great. I can't wait to see them. I've never heard of either of these movies outside of putting them in the bracket, and so <laughs> I too haven't heard of either of these. I movies, can assume but... Firebirds is about guys driving big, fast cars mm-hmm. in circles, really fast in, in Louisiana. <laughs> yes, uh, and I assume Seeking Justice is about. Uh, seeking a justice for the Supreme Court. Yeah, uh, either yeah, it's probably seeking. Uh, it, did it? I don't know the year that came out, but I'm assuming it's probably in the wake of uh, Justice Scalia's death. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, so that it's either that or they're trying to um, exonerate a police officer who has uh, murdered a citizen. Yeah, like the the one who wandered into another person's apartment and killed them and then left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and so seeking justice, uh, for the, the brave boys in blue. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, maybe Dave will be back. I don't know. It depends on, well, we, 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 we. you maybe won't be making be the decision. <laughs> uh, yeah. And if, um, if anybody has any, uh, you know, job leads uh you can find dave probably at a gas station uh <laughs> bathrooms fucking sucking dick for whatever in there paycheck and, uh. that's fair make your jokes make your jokes i'm burning this motherfucker down when i leave <laughs> oh shit <laughs> somebody take the stash of money <laughs> yeah we gotta get the money out of here and i shouldn't leave these cans of gas later <laughs> where's nicole <laughs> Uh, but anyways, bye bye. Mm, bye. This has been a solid work production. Solid work. Solid work. Uh, solid work. Hey, solid, solid work. work.